Hello. Um, so I just got off the phone with some of the distribution spec maintainers and we're coming up with uh, a strategy for getting out a, an RC for distribution spec. Um, so RC1, there was an RC0 that was all the way back in February 2019. So we do still have a few issues to work out. Um, uh, people have been opening uh, issues against the new version of the spec already. And there's some work that, um, that I need to do as well. But we're trying to practice and go through the release process. So considering that RC2 will be closer to the final um, 1.0 release. Uh, we're going through the formal process of going, doing the release through the mailing list. Um, Vince just opened up a uh, pull request just like 10 minutes ago with a list of the pull requests that have been merged since RC0. And um, either during this call or right after this call, I'm about to send the email out to the list for the vote on RC, uh, on RC1. So that's pretty much all I have to share. Um, you know, obviously I, I would love for people, um, whether it's before or after RC1 going out for people to kind of go through this with a fine tooth comb and make sure we aren't missing things. I know I already, we already uh, messed up something with cross repo mounting. So there, there's a few things we still need to do. So um, that, yeah, that's all I got. Steve, you're uh, muted. I said, you want to put the PR in the hack doc? Yes. Yep. I'll do that right now. Okay. So careful on pauses. So I don't know how loud the squeal is. I guess I'll hear it later. Um, let me share here for the latest of what we've been getting. All right. Let me get the sharing right this time. Okay, so as many are aware, we've been off in notary land working on how we want to think about uh, signatures in a registry. Um, there's uh, actually, let me just pull up one quick picture here. So this one. I realized I, I jumped right into the middle. Let me give a quick context. Okay, so we've been kind of coming from this environment of where I've uh, got a build environment. I build an image. I can push it to a registry. I have some signatures on it, such as, in this case, um, the other one. Does this one have it? Hold on. Yeah, this one has the, the one we've been using lately. So the Webit Networks makes this net monitor software. They have an image, they have an SBOM, they have some source code vis-a-vis um, -vis the stuff that uh, Vincent was kind of working on where you could package up source code and uh, an artifact and submit them all under an index was the working thought. You could put a signature on all of them. You can push it up to Docker Hub and for those that never heard of Wabbit Networks, Docker might have a certification process that says, yep, this one's good. Uh, and so companies might like Acme Rocket say, well, I trust Docker Hub. They've attested to Wabbit Networks. I'll pull it into my environment. In the Acme Rockets environment, they want to do some additional testing to make sure it works in their environment. And they add another signature, which says, yep, good for Acme Rockets. And then as a policy management, it only allows things that are signed by Acme Rockets as an example. There's a couple of implicit things in here, um, collections of signatures. Uh, signatures are additive. Uh, things like um, uh, the, the digest and the tag of the, manif of the thing that I'm trying to do a deployment on doesn't change because uh, the devs define these scripts or Helm charts have references and so forth. So we want to have these additive signatures like I've done here. Docker Hub added a signature to an existing artifact. Acme added a signature to an existing artifact. So we have to have the, this immutability. 
So the way we've been kind of thinking about it um, is, well, we've been rethinking through it a lot, actually. And now we've got a chance to dig into a little bit more. If we think about where we've gone a little bit with the artifact spec is we have this image index and an image manifest that happened to be in the image spec, but that's, that's a, neither here nor there for now. Um, and of course, the image spec can, an image can be a type of artifact, which is either an index or a manifest. Uh, there's a collection of manifests that says they're multi-arc. The Helm, uh, uh, Helm chart is a type of manifest as well as singularity. And of course, the WASM thing we've been talking about recently. And we still have this CNAV thing that's kind of floating out there as a little bit of an anomaly that we've been trying to figure out. But we kind of said, look, we'll put that off until we're ready and we'll come back to it. And of course, we have our OPA friends. As we've been thinking about signatures, we've been kind of thinking about how does this fit in? And, you know, initially we were trying to get anything to be approved because we were really trying to just get the, the model working and we wanted to leverage anything that was there and minimize any changes whatsoever. So we glommed on to the config object that exists in manifest. And that worked, you know, worked well. We obviously had a number of success around that. As we're starting to think about the signatures or collections, there become some interesting questions. And if I group these, are these really collection types? In fact, are these things even really singular types? So this is what I'll kind of drill into here. Um, they're not really collections of artifacts, but they have a collection of references. You'll see what I mean. So if I take the net monitor software and I say it's a digest that has signatures, um, the Wabbit Network company signs it, Docker Hub signs it, Acme Rockets signs it. And since I can't change anything related to this, these new artifact types need to get pushed to the registry and have references to the net monitor software. What's interesting is that itself isn't new to registries per se, but the idea is that you don't actually ask the registry for the Wabbit network signature and everything it's signed because there's lots of things that are signed and this individual signature of this individual thing is an individual thing. So I can't, can't just ask for the Wabbit network signature. I'm asking for a particular signature, a particular thing where I'm really saying, no, 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 actually I'm trying to tell Kubernetes to deploy the net monitor software. And there's an OPA policy that says, I'll only deploy things if it's signed by, well, in this case, that can rockets. If I think of a Helm chart, today Helm charts are in a registry as a single thing. And as we've been having various conversations around uh, getting the registry capability surfaced as a replacement to Helm repos, uh, because we, we definitely had some challenges there, that one of the questions was it doesn't handle um, chart references, chart dependencies, how do I refer to it? Um, or subcharts, sorry, that's what I was trying to say. But it's actually not just subcharts. The weird thing is that a Helm chart has a reference to an image and it's the reference itself isn't anything known by the registry. So if somebody's trying to take a Helm chart, put it into their registry so they have control of the deployment, um, unless they modify the Helm chart, it's actually pointing at who knows where, it could be still from Docker or somewhere else. If the Helm chart actually had references to other artifacts, then we could actually have those things be tracked in the registry as well. And, and but in this case, if you look, the Helm chart is what's pointing at a collection of things. And of course, it can point to subcharts as well. I just stopped with the animation. So what we really have is there's a thing and there's this one to one or one to many or many to one reference to other things that are in the registry. And the references are really important for a number of reasons. One, when I query something, I want to get the forward of reverse references. But of course, the dreaded garbage collector that we always refer to is it needs to be able to account for these things. So elaborating a little bit more, we have these individual types. Now we have some reference types. And maybe we have some collection types. So let's take a CNAB uh, as well. So today, a CNAB kind of has this reference to an invocation image, and it has a reference to um, an actual image that would be deployed, in this case, the WordPress uh, image. 
But if it's trying to use Helm to deploy it, it actually puts Helm in the invocation image, which is kind of strange. I'm not sure if somebody's trying to chat. Let me pop the chat window out. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'll make it available somewhere. Uh, and I'll send it out. Um, so what, sorry, sorry, what I started to say is the invocation image actually has the Helm chart in it, which is kind of weird. Uh, because if I just want to update the Helm chart, I have to rebuild the whole invocation image. And that means that any certification I have that binary, I no longer can trust that one because I'm rebuilding it every time. It's kind of heavyweight if all I'm trying to do is change the Helm chart. But CNAP was being built before Artifacts was really officially started, um, hoping that when we, if we change that, that the CNAP that's in a registry could actually point to a Helm chart, which could point at the images it references. So you kind of start to get a lot more flexibility with this concept of referencing. So again, a thing is one to many, many to one, and so forth. So what's interesting is we kind of have come a little bit full circle in a way, because now individual types are there. So I'd probably say these are probably the individual types. If I knew more about them, maybe they, maybe WASM would be something different. Um, I have these reference types, and then we have, you know, the multi-arc index. But then the question is, is signature really a reference type? Um, these other things are things that I want to be able to interact with in a registry, but I don't know if I really want to interact with a signature independently. So I took a little mock-up of the uh, Azure Container Registry repo listing, not the most elaborate UI, that's not our skill set, but we know how to paint a couple of characters in the template of work we get. So if I'm pushing the hello world, and I didn't get a chance to update this to net monitor, but um, if I just have the hello world tag listing, I can see all of the builds for that. And that's interesting. But what happens when I start pushing different signature objects in there or S bombs? Am I, am I putting a tag on each one? Because I really don't need to see the signature as a thing in the registry. It's an individual thing because I'm not going to pull it directly. It's that's just not the way I would think about it. So even if I were to adorn it with icons, it's just uh, it's not that interesting in addition to the fact that it just gets ridiculously long. What I really want to do is say an individual artifact, which in this case these happen to be all images, happens to have a signature. So it's more of an attribute that's applied to an artifact, not really another artifact per se. And if I were to go further, if I have an SBOM, um, is an SBOM just another type of attribute or a scan result listing or, you know, what date that something was pushed to the registry or other artifact uh, metadata pieces that I might associate with an individual uh, artifact that's in a registry. So, what I'm kind of coming around to is, is there artifacts, which is a collection of artifacts. These are the things I think I want to be able to see in a registry. And then there is some metadata around those that I want to be able to interact with. And some of the things are static values, like I can send an SBOM and I say, hey, that SBOM is for the singularity image. Um, the vulnerability images, the vulnerability summaries are things that I probably would update because I'm going to do additional scan results. So this one gets updated. I might want to submit some docs that I can just put as a special artifact type in it and the registry knows to pull this thing out and displays it. But then I get some other interesting ones like what is the tag history? Um, what's the pull count? the last pull date, expiration date, these things are, might be things that I set. These things are values that the registry would maintain, but surface in a common way. And I've avoided the namespacing to make things unique. I'm just trying to get some basic concepts here. So where I've kind of come as I've tried to get the slides updated is we have image index, we have image manifest. Is there a new type that is an artifact manifest that has instead of layers, so we keep on talking about how we want to get word, rid of the word layers outside of images. So now this manifest type is blobs and it has a reference collection um, where that I might want to send up a signature and the signature gets stored as a blob and it refers to the NetMonitor software. 
So if I were to kind of redo that original chart, that original uh, slide, then you'll see that all of these things effectively become a new artifact manifest in a registry. And again, don't forget OPA. Uh, and now we have a way that actually the spec technically says I have to at least support image index and image manifest. It doesn't say anything only. Are we ready to say instead of putting, instead of changing these types, which we still might want to do, is we put a new manifest in um, that we can now support this, these collections and attributes and, you know, SBOMs and attributes and signatures and, and that's it. So I'll pause because that's all the slides I have. And I'll try to mute my mic if I can find it. So I have been trying to figure out how to stick an SBOM uh, using artifacts. And the way that I have done it is using the, the, mm, the image manifest rather than an artifact manifest. Uh, the problem with that I found with SBOMs, uh, especially with the SPDX ones, is the, the content addressability stuff. So um, SPDX requires that uh, it has references. I mean, it, it kind of describes all of the things that you have downloaded, including the index and the manifest and uh, all of the things that uh, you know a, a user or a consumer would be downloading from a registry. So. Uh, in that sense, it, it's really, it, it, I don't know how to do that because uh, then, you know, the, the document has to refer to the index, but then something needs to refer to the document. So I wonder if this is this, how, how would someone, how would a client know whether an artifact manifest exists or not? I think you're muted, Steve. You're still muted, Steve. Yeah, I guess you can't see the the overlay that comes down. I was trying to get that to pop down. Thank you. Um, in the SBOM case, the idea is that the question that I kind of have for some of these, and maybe this is the delineation between SBOMs and artifacts or metadata and S and artifacts is when does somebody want to query it directly, uh, directly and I guess independently? Because I can definitely see metadata as something I want to get all of the artifacts that are supposed to be deleted today. So that's like this reverse index. So the idea for your SBOM is it is just a layer because we have, if we assume we have this new artifact manifest type, you would basically, we'll define a new schema because um, the, that you have your blob that says here is the SBOM, and it could be a collection of blobs, and it refers to a particular image, for, for let's say. The right. reason the manifests are super important, and I kind of skipped over this, is at a registry, we use these to figure out how we're going to track things, because uploading content to a registry is not a transactional boundary. You basically say, hey, registry, here's a blob, here's another blob, Here's another blob and I keep on throwing blobs at you, maybe concurrently, maybe spaced out. Then I throw another blob and that happens to be the config object. And then within some reasonable period of time, I don't actually know if it's in the spec, we all just have our own deterministic times. Here's a manifest that says stitch all these things together. And if the registry doesn't get the manifest within some period of time, we go like, I don't know what these loose things are and we toss them from garbage collection. Um, it's also how we know how to delete things because we do a lot of deduping and stuff in registries. So the, the thing that we've been talking about for these reference types before was, hey, can I just call a blob put and then call another API that links them? I'm just still thinking that the manifest idea is helpful to drive that linkage instead of just an arbitrary put. 
um, because this then defines some piece of data that I can look at that is more than a one-to-one -one, and I can make logical grouping of it. Um, and it can support the things like you're talking about here, Nisha, with uh, SBOMs as well. Yeah, um, at this point, I, I, I have managed to say like, uh, you know, use, a, I, I suppose, an SBOM manifest. And so each layer becomes uh, like an SBOM, an SBOM for an individual package that comes with a whole container image. Um, now, yeah, and, and um, I'm working with the SPDX community to figure out how exactly SPDX can handle this kind of uh, artifact where you have something external to the document that points to another document that points to another document and you have to kind of walk down all of it in order to get to the actual SBOM and how does that SBOM say, hey, I describe, you know, this container image and you can get to it by uh, walking from this index all the way down to me. And um, I also can point to other places where you can go and, uh, you know, qu query other information if you want it. So for example, the SBOM would say for this particular package, the corresponding sources are over here and uh, oh, something like, okay, for this image, it contains this package, the corresponding sources for this package is over here. Uh, and if you're doing it like with the, like build source image style, then you have to say, you know, you can get the corresponding package by downloading that image over there. Um, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, you know, references going on. Um, and well, I, I suppose, I mean, I'm, it, I seem to be managing reasonably well with just layers, if not for the, the nomenclature for that, Thing, uh, simply because instead of using tarballs, I use um, uh, JSON objects, and I wonder if that and and I think that the spec allows for that, right? A layer can be a JSON object. Yeah, so uh, that seems to do the S bomb thing, but um, signatures. The signature bit is, well, the, there's a double whammy for me over here. First of all, I don't know how you can, uh, you know, I don't know where in an SBOM you can say, oh, by the way, I'm signed. Um, oh, I can have, and the signature is somewhere else. Well, the idea is because as we showed that first slide, signatures are additive, um, the signature would point to the SBOM. So you would be able to go to the registry and say, for any particular thing, what is the sig do I have any signatures for it? And then the client has a way to, and, and we're still getting into the details of how do I efficiently get a signature? Because in, in the example we showed here, there actually is three signatures and I don't want to have to iterate through all three. So I, I will get to that next level of how do we get efficiently things out? But the idea is that you would Signatures are additional pieces of metadata that get added to information in a registry. So the okay. question is, does metadata get signed? Like that would be an interesting problem. The, in this case, I would probably say that the, um, the SBOM like I think is, is an artifact rep manifest that basically says I refer to this other thing and maybe there's a piece that says in the artifact manifest whether I um, should be exposed or not. Um, like I would imagine an SBOM isn't necessarily a tag, it's an attribute that gets shown on an artifact. So for instance, I, I said these two have SBOMs, but these other ones just for the sake of display don't. Well, I mean, but, this, is, this is the problem that I'm having is that there is so much of metadata that gets 
dumped into the S bomb that it might as well be be an artifact in and of itself. Mm -hmm. You can't. You can't. Uh, I mean, you can say at the top level, yes, this. Uh, you know, this container image is called blah, um, and it is, and it comes from this supplier, but. The reality is that the container image contains all of these other like individual things can that come from different suppliers, and those things come from different suppliers, and you, so on and so forth. The supply chain is really complicated, and the S bomb needs to reflect that. And for the purposes of you know searching for licenses and uh, version software versions um, that that kind of in-depth metadata support would be nice um, so in in that sense because there's so much of data about the data and folks are looking for different things I kind of feel like it can't really be an attribute by the way, I'm pasting a link to a mock-up that I have for um, sticking S bombs into container images. Mm -hmm. uh, just for reference. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, they, the, the S bombs get really big. And especially oh, with the, like, the can, yeah, go ahead. Just, yeah, because I, I want to leave time for uh, Brian's thing, but I wanted to give some others some time to think. There's a whole great set of conversations we have around S-bombs and everything. I think in this case, we're trying to make sure that we can support uh, different types of information. Um, so just for the sake, so I can give Brian some time. Um, is there any other? So I, I have a question, but it's probably pretty closely related to S-bomb stuff. Basically, it's just about the reverse indexes. Like, if I want to make a signature, for example, I may not be able to test like the ARM variant of a container image, only the x86 one. So, I actually don't want to sign the index. I want to sign just the specific image that we signed off on, right? Um, yeah. So now you get this question of: uh, I'm looking for a signature for this thing. Is it a signature of the? index? Is it a signature of the particular variant that I actually want from it? Um, and I think this is kind of getting at uh, what Nisha was saying, where SBOM doesn't know actually what you care about, so they have to basically document everything, every relationship. Well, the, it might, you know, to your point, it might be more of the SBOM thing. The, the way we've said for signatures is you can sign uh, an individual manifest so in this case, the NetMonitor software is, you know, platform agnostic. So pick Windows and Linux doesn't really matter. And I have two signatures on it. I can also sign. So here is now the Windows and the Linux variants. They're individually signed by two, but I can also sign the index. So there's nothing that says here that a, a signature or any attributes for what we're talking about here couldn't be assigned to either, because both of these are just digests, they're just you know, references in it. The fact that the digest happens to be an index, a manifest, or an artifact manifest are details. So if I were to look at another version of that portal listing, you might see the Windows, the Linux, and the multi-arc index instead of a single container. It's a collection of containers, whatever you know, we decide to put on there. And there might be signatures only on Windows and ARM, and for some reason the Linux one didn't get a signature. Yeah, so one of the things that Tuff does, for example, to try to um, avoid the question of like, well, where is the signature? Is it on the metadata? Is it on the actual object? Is they just always put it on the actual object? So the suggestion would be you never assign the OCI index. You always just have collections of signatures for the individual manifests within the index. And then you could aggregate them together if you wanted to with like an API but the signatures always live on the exact like bottom level content of the thing you care about. Um, that avoids probably Nisha's problem with like providers that have other providers, like all this nesting that you get if you just say the signatures are only on the end content and not any of the metadata. And if you find that thing through the metadata, then cool, that's great. Um, you know this is all metadata about the, uh, the content you care about. 
And uh, I don't know if people care about signatures on metadata or if they care about signatures on content because asserting that like the metadata is correct is a completely different concern. And I, I, I'm not sure um, if that's like a design goal, right? So you're still muted. I, got the, yeah, yeah. I actually got the visual cue as well here. Um, Cormac was kind of bringing up the question, and I guess part of it is based on some of the history, some of which I know and some of which I don't, I'm glad they don't, uh, is should you be able to sign individuals or only sign them the, or the index? I actually think you should be able to have both. I'm sure we'll get into that detail. I don't know if we would dictate one or the other. It would probably be up to the, the individual that's posting those. Um, because it, the, it, the interesting one wasn't as much the, the platform specific images like java.net and node whether the multi-platform because there's only a few people in this community that build those. IoT gets interesting because end developers are building IoT images that are multi-arc. So um, I kind of leave that one open, I guess. But it, it is an interesting question whether if we treat SBOMs and some of these other things as metadata, can I sign metadata? So that, that becomes an interesting one, but I'm not sure. I actually think an SBOM, I, I don't know. Right now I'm trying to figure out a right way to get these collections because we need to be able to have a reverse lookup. Um, yeah, is the well, big, also big the problem becomes like, how do you differentiate like that bottom level content from metadata? <laughs> like, how do you know a blob is pure metadata or not? That's, that's a whole oh, other so that's, question. That's right? why I'm suggesting there is a different collection type and only because I didn't, I literally was like building slides when we got here, was this thing yeah, probably needs another those. attribute on it that says whether I want to be displayed or not. Because um, there's a bunch of things that I just don't think have any business needing tags. And I want to know what just gets transitively deleted versus might block a delete. So um, those are kind of interesting. So maybe five more minutes and then we'll leave the last 15 for, for Brian. Unless Brian, you think it's gonna, well, we'll see. But anybody else? I mean, this, this is new even for some people that are, that's been tracking Notary because I was trying to address the feedback from the last couple of weeks. I put a question into the chat. Oh. So I think the one the oh, yeah. prior to this is as the metadata. Yep. Yeah, so I've been playing with this idea of um, metadata services. Again, part of OCI distribution because the idea that every registry has a different implementation with no ability for the information to move between registries is honestly just kind of broken. Um, the same way we want signatures to move. And as signatures are becoming more of this attribute-ish level thing, it kind of felt the right time to pull that in. Um, so there, I mean, there's a couple of things in there and I've been, there's a PR, which I'll list also, it's, it's still rough, um, that talks about some metadata stuff that you would set, some is things that the registry just calculates, like the poll count, I think is what, yeah, like last polled. So nobody sets that value as a human or a service, it's, well, outside, the registry would set that value. So the, that's, is that kind of what you were getting at? Mark? Well, well, it would be very, it would, it would be difficult to be able to make that consistent and replicatable across registries. Oh. You know, things like poll count and last poll date, et cetera. Whereas a signature I see as kind of a different entity that it is more tied to the image. As you know, you might, you may call yeah. it both metadata, but I see a distinction between those two as to what would what would you move between registries and what doesn't make sense to move between registries yeah absolutely I, it's captured in the detail for the sake of time i won't go into it because honestly the pr is okay. not in a great readable state so uh we'll bring that up at a later time but yes there's a set, certain sets of metadata or flag that get copied with and some stay with the registry and the semantics of that we need to make very clear great thanks so I'll post this uh, deck so that people can poke at it and um, we'll continue these conversations as a combination of OCI and uh, Art Notary. And with that, I will hand off to Brian.
Oh, thank you. So um, I just wanted to kind of poke the bees hive a little bit on this PR to the image spec, uh, number 777. I'll link it in chat just in case we don't have uh, hack and bee up or whatever. Uh, so this is a change submitted by Docker about a year, a little over a year ago to, it's essentially upstreaming a change that's in BuildKit already where uh, BuildKit adds this uh, CPU variant uh, to the image uh, spec. Um, it seems like people seem like this is a good idea and then some more people came up later and said, why don't we just you know, have the whole platform spec on there. And honestly, it makes a lot of sense for Windows um, to be able to access the, some of those fields like OS version uh, because Windows uh, containers can only run on the host uh, version that they were created for. So um, they're very tied to that. So um, just kind of wanting to, I, I opened up a second PR that kind of carries 777, uh, it's number 809, that, that does that. It takes, it basically just embeds all the platform fields into the image spec uh, so that we um, can essentially be able to like backfill indexes or um, you know, make determinations on what to do just from the image spec without having to have a descriptor or having the, uh, uh, the index available. And it seemed like everybody was like, yeah, this is good. And I, Derek made a comment saying, yeah, this is just upstreaming build kit and VBATS uh, uh, said it's good, but it's had like no movement in quite some time. So I wanted to poke that and, and uh, see where the, we might come from here. Yeah, I think the Chris Price was the original in the, in the PR that you were helping out. Yep. Is that right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I think he was helping out some of the work. We were trying to integrate some of Container D stuff back into Mobi. And there's, yeah, there are some cases where uh, BuildKit and Mobi were doing some stuff that weren't actually in OCI. So we were just trying to, to reconcile that since there was no reason to not actually have the variant in there. So when Brian poked at me on this this morning, saying, hey, how do I get on this, I get on the agenda? And the topic came up. The thing that I was curious about was how do we, for the same similar conversation that if we stuck another attribute on index, um, what happens to downstream clients? How would this work out? Like, is this the, do we have any concern or the downstream clients have already consumed this and what's the impact? So I know Docker is already consuming CPU variant. Uh, and actually, we do a check to see if the field's set or not. And if it is set, then we'll use it. And if it's not set, we we just ignore it. Um, like so, we're like when we're trying to do platform matching, that kind of stuff. Um, I'm not sure what might need to be done for Windows in terms of that. Probably the same thing. Or just like if it's not there, then um, we just assume that it's built from an old uh, an old builder. And uh, that's. Yeah, I'm not sure what to do for things that just don't support it, period. Because the other problem that we've been facing is image spec actually already is a 1.0. So can you make this change to something that's already 1.0? Do we need a 1.1? Is it a 2.0? What actually would be super interesting is if we could ask the people who run registries if they could, can answer this question. How many images in your registry don't have the platform data in it? like the CPU platform data. Um, that would tell us immediately <laughs> how many people will break. Yeah, we, I can't imagine we index that honestly. This is, that's in that category of the gabillion images that we have. We don't index a lot of information because of it would just fall over. Um, so there's certain things that we bubble up, but I don't know if this is one of the ones that we would be able to easily query. It's definitely something you can sample. That we can do. We could definitely uh, do some interest, do some sampling. The, the question is where, like, where, where's the right, where's the right to poke place to poke in the ground for where the gold is. I mean, it's from tricky. a compatibility. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, I was just going to say we're probably going to see this a bunch in the future. Just like needing to ask these questions for many different aspects when we make changes. So people should get used to this idea that we we have some source of data to ask these questions about. I think from a compatibility perspective, this is additive and they're optional fields. So 
as far as 100 to 101, this should be totally kosher. I mean, this kind of came up, came up when we we're talking about the multi arc images as well, where there's not actually enough information in the config today to determine what the platform is. And at least this was one of the one of those constraints. So Derek, I'm curious, how is this different than the config object being optional in index? Is it because in this case, it still is an image, so it's okay to process. And if in the artifact case, we were using config to say this isn't an image, it actually means something else. And if the client got it, it might choke on it because it doesn't know to get that. Is that the differentiator here? Well, I think for this, the variant is always defaulted to something when it's not given. So the knowledge of the variant is already in every client. It's just the clients have to, to assume and has to make some assumption about variant. And a lot of clients actually even look for this if they if they uh, expect to parse uh, a platform out, then it's going to look for this. So um, yeah, it's much different than just adding adding a new like config where it would change the whole behavior. This isn't really changing the behavior of anything. It's just providing kind of a gap in information that the clients are filling in or defaulting. So we're basically to almost to Jimmy's point, we're putting the spec in place for what's already running. We're basically reverse specing it. At least for variant, yeah. Uh, I doubt. I don't think anybody's injecting uh, OS version uh, right now. But it's definitely something like the Windows team I've talked to. They're like, yeah, we would love to have this. Yeah, there was and there were some other discussions about adding a full platform field to the to that config instead of just adding the variant field because it's it's kind of inconsistent today with the way the other platform fields are. It's not all nicely separated. Um, but the problem is, yeah, if we did that, then, then you'd have kind of more of a compatibility issue if you have a, another field that clients don't know to look for. So you, you would end up having to duplicate data anyway. So uh, if, at least for a change that is really just additive, it makes sense just to put this there, I think. So what's the process? The fact that it is a 1.0 already, is this something we want to do in the, the V2 stuff? Is it a change we put in one? I'm, I'm just asking the question. I actually don't have a full opinion. I, th I think it's a small point release, but I, th I think the problem here is that uh, there's not really much activity on this the image tech repo. Who are the maintainers? Not Ryan a set Burns. of folks that come around much. <laughs> <laughs> People that, uh, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Surprised to see Brendan on there. <laughs> uh, I know where he yep. lives. You know, Brian, what's your job? Up. Sorry, Alexa is doing the V2 stuff, but since he did the initial presentation, we haven't seen him. Um, why? Uh, so, I mean, I'm happy to facilitate a conversation with the folks. Vincent doesn't happen to be here today. Um, Brian, I would just suggest emailing the maintainers and say, what do you think? Um, and probably start from there. Yep, sounds good. We also, um, there was a smaller project, but on the Go Digest, I think we broke some of the maintainer deadlock by having a larger kind of retirement of inactive maintainers replaced with, with some active ones. Um, yeah. I don't know, that's probably not the best idea for a big repo, but maybe adding more maintainers can at least help break some of the deadline. 
I, I wasn't sure if Chris, Chris coincidentally jumped in at the, for this topic or what, but I, I guess let's see what the maintainers say, you know, and who's being active. Cause I know a couple of them are still active and, you know, interested. Um, and let's see what happens there. If there's, if there's no activity, then obviously that's something we have to kind of figure out. But if there's activity engagement and good points, then that's good topics to think about. And, but if there's no activity, then we can you know, figure out what the next step would be. Yep, sounds good. Actually, Derek, I thought you were a maintainer on it, but I guess not. <laughs> uh, that was, I think back then I was more in the background working on that. And I think it was pretty much one per company. Actually, there's a lot of Microsoft folks on there. At the time. I don't remember. Yeah, you got John and um, Brendan. I think it was mostly because the Windows work that basically Brian's trying to cover here. So. Okay. Yeah, thank you. I, I expected that one to go much longer. Uh, all right, so I will put a, I'll post the slides. I'll send out some links. Um, Brian, ping the maintainers figure out what the next steps are. And Misha, we can definitely drill in more on the um, uh, SBOM stuff. So with that, we can give everybody a little break before the next meeting. <laughs>